Welcome everyone to the Railroad Retirement Whiteboard. My name is John McNamara of Highball Advisors. And this week's topic, we're gonna to talk about how safe is your uh, railroad retirement. I thought this would be a good topic because we're seeing in the news um, a lot of spending down in Washington, blown through some budgets, you know, big time numbers over trillion dollar deficits. And, you know, putting that all together, it can get some people a little bit nervous. So I thought I'd touch on how safe is uh, your railroad retirement in this episode. So when we talk about railroad retirement, right, there's the tier one portion, which uh, looks like Social Security. You know, you're paying your 6.2% into that. And then your tier two, which is more of a pension income, uh, which is... Um, uh, which is invested differently. But let's just talk about tier one because that, to me, that's a, that's a big issue right now. So uh, tier one, like I said, acts like Social Security, but the difference is, um, you know, you pay in at 6.2% and the payouts are all the same like that, but the funds aren't uh, intermingled with Social Security. Uh, they're pay, you know, um, there's a transfer mechanism between the uh, railroad retirement boards, the, the trust, and Social Security. They do that annually, once a year, but uh, they are they are separate, even though they're equivalent payouts, and it kind of looks the same. So it's a little bit confusing. Just you know, the payouts are the same, but the mechanism to get you there is is a little bit different. So. Um, what happens with the Railroad Retirement Board is uh, every, I think it's every year or every other year, they're, they're required to make the, uh, uh, to report to Congress the act, actuarial evaluation report. I'll get that out. And this is uh, particularly uh, related to uh, the Social Security equivalency benefit payments. That's the tier one payments. So what they said, uh, just regarding all of railroad retirement is, uh, you know, it's good for worst case 29 years, which is, you know, which is good. That's worst case. And then best case, 75 years. So, you know, just high level, that's great uh, to think about. And the way they did that is uh, they chose three models, you know, uh, two scenarios and one really bad scenario is where, you know, the drop off of railroad employment uh, almost halves from where it is to, uh, from, I think we're over a little over 200,000 down to like 110, 112,000. So that'd be like a worst case scenario, right? You don't have enough people uh, paying into it. But what I thought was interesting is you're saying, well, railroad retirement board uh, is in good shape. So, you know, that's fantastic. But I also looked at the Social Security Trust Fund and that wouldn't really reflect railroad retirements, except that you guys have to be at the same benefit level, uh, the same taxation rate, uh, same retirement ages as Social Security. It's mandated by law. So when you look at the Social Security report, they say by 2035, which is, you know, 15 years, 16 years away, uh, they're going to pay reduced uh, at 75% of benefits unless they do something. And all they can really do, right, all Congress can really do is either raise the retirement age or uh, raise the payroll tax. So, uh, It'd be interesting. I don't. I haven't seen any discussion, and we'll keep an eye on. We'll monitor it. But if this changes the raising of the age or the payroll tax, uh, I think by law they're going to have to do something on the railroad retirement end because it has to look like uh, Social Security uh, by law. So that's just something to realize. So the railroaders are fine. Everybody else is not so fine in 15 years but the railroaders might have to pay. So we'll, we're gonna keep an eye on that. So on the other side, tier two is, um, that's pension income, right? So tier two basically was established uh, uh, that part by the, uh, in the 2001, the Railroad uh, Retirement and Survivor uh, Improvement Act, right? Everybody knows that one. Uh, and it formed the uh, National Railroad Retirement Investment Trust, right? A group of uh, their charge is basically, here's some money that railroads are paying in, right? You're 4.9%, invest it, grow the money. And they've done a great job, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, there's about, uh, I think they have over $26 billion and they've made all the payments necessary. And uh, I think they did over 7.5% last year. And a year before that, they did like 13%. So, I mean, they're doing a lot better than what Social Security is returning. 
So, uh, and they're run by independent trustees, three uh, railroad, uh, from th three from the railroad, three from labor, and one independent. Uh, and they're separate from the Railroad Retirement Board in that uh, the Railroad Retirement Board doesn't uh, dictate what kind of investments that they should do and uh, things along that way. So the risk to your risk to on the tier two side would be if something catastrophic happens in the uh, really the world economy. I would just say U.S. stocks, but they you know they got hammered in 2008, 2009, and the uh, Railroad Retirement Board came through it. So it would have to be something of a a cataclysmic event really because uh, they're if you look through uh, the way they invest they invest diversified which is what I always talk to my clients about right if something's not good here it might be better here you know stocks are going this way bonds are going this way everything's diversified so they'll invest you know obviously in fixed income and stocks internationally domestic they'll invest in commodities real estate so they have a lot of things going on a lot of managers private equity um, and uh, so they're doing they're doing okay so right this risk is stock market and then also they also have four to six years in reserves um, which lets them ride out a lot of cycles so and then you know the worst case scenario is, is if they are going uh, if they are struggling to come up with money they can always raise taxes on the railroads uh, they can't raise it above 4.9 percent without an act of uh, congress because that's the highest it's uh, allowed to go so they probably go to the railroads first but anyway i just wanted to talk to you uh get a feel for um how safe your railroad retirement is i think it's you know overall you know i think you guys are in great shape this is a little interesting i like to see how that plays out maybe uh somebody can send in some comments about that if they have any information how that would work out uh that would be great um and then also on the tier two, another great thing is, you know, take advantage of what they're doing, diversification. I talk about that all the time in portfolios. But anyway, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm posting up a lot of videos there. Appreciate the comments. Keep them coming. Uh, in the meantime, uh, stay safe, uh, stay on track, and take care. So long, everybody. Bye.